Welcome everyone, Quistine here with a discussion about the Thunder Barges in Total War Warhammer 3, Thrones of Decay, Immortal Empires. This has been a subject of a lot of discussion in the community online. Generally, when a DLC comes out, there's always going to be people saying, oh, this is too overpowered. And I've seen that with Warriors of Chaos, Chaos Dwarves, Thrones of Decay, most uh, the huge discussion happening around Thrones of Decay, and of course, Shadows of Change. But now, with the Thunder Barge, is there any kind of merit to the argument that cast, uh, that Dwarf Thunder Barges are really powerful? Well, here's the thing. It is an entity, a single entity, with a lot of HP. So, 35,000 uh, HP, a lot of armor, a good amount of damage that's kind of hard to tell. But basically, it's got two cannons right here in the prow. It's got Grudge Rakers over here shooting from the sides so at both air and ground targets it's got a harpoon with a single use ability over here that does a lot of damage to single entities it can drop like a lot of single entities like either by a quarter hp or even half hp depending on what we're talking about and this thing is fast it might say only 30 speed over here but you can triple the speed you can get to 90 speed and that's pretty quick now, the problem with countering the Thunder Barge and dealing with it in any battle, well, the AI is not going to be really good against it, though it can destroy it. It can destroy Thunder Barges. But with 90 speed, the problem comes with Thunder Barges is they're fairly resistant to missile attacks. They have 15% missile resistance. They have spell resistance. So they're, they can be tricky to deal with. Spell damage is not necessarily going to bring it down. Though you can obviously use dis disabling spells to slow it down by quite a bit. And when, it, when you do use the Afterburner, it is going to do some damage. Not necessarily a whole lot of damage, but still a decent amount of damage over here. But this is mainly an anti-ground unit. It can deal with artillery fairly easily because, one, it can move so fast that the artillery is going to have a hard time locking in. Two, it can, once it gets over the artillery, it's game over for that artillery because it drops bombs. So like when you're over a target, it will drop bombs on that target. So like the radius you see here is like the bomb radius. Cannons, longer range, of course. Grudge Rakers, long range, though they're dwarf shotgunners, really. So how do you deal with it? Well. It is a flying unit, and the problem with dealing with it is like those Grudge Rakers, gunpowder units in general, are pretty good against single entity. So sending a single entity to try and deal with this is not really the wisest idea. Sending units with heavy armor, also not a great idea because those Grudge Rakers have a lot of armor piercing. Trying to deal with ground with it is probably not going to work that effectively unless you're using spells to disable it. That's the solution for Skaven, I imagine. So, let me just go for a series of tests with it. I am going to use this template. I have Dwarf Lord on this map. He's going to be hidden. He's not going to do anything. And we're going to fight Bretonia. Now, I've positioned two units of Royal Pegasus Knights. They're pretty fast. I didn't go with the Hippogriff Knights because while they do have armor piercing and technically are the better unit, uh, not in this situation. So... We move over here, we activate the afterburner, we won't be able to outrun this, but because of the an melee animation situation, especially between air targets, it's going to make it so that these guys are going to struggle to get any hits in. Thing is, trying to kill them is a bit of a tricky proposal, because... In, you need to do broadsides. You don't have a gun in the back, so when you're hit, when you're trying to hit things in there, you you need to do like a constant micromanagement dance. Whereas the enemy can just like you know order their units to attack a target, disable guard mode, and just yeah order the attack. But you can see that I'm taking a decent amount of damage, and the AI is really stupid in this, I might add. But they're still dealing quite a bit of damage. Now Royal Pegasus Knights are more expensive by 400. These two units. But they're doing a pretty decent job. And obviously they would do a much better job if they stopped trying to cycle charge the damn thing. Because that's not really going to work. <laughs> but yeah, like I just need to keep uh, dancing around if I'm going to try and kill them. And quite a lot of the times my shots, my grudge rakers are going to actually struggle 
uh, to deal any kind of damage to these guys. And it is is a bit tricky. Like sometimes you can win the spells uh, with the Thunderbart. Sometimes you can lose the spell. I can't outrun the Pegasus Knights. And if I don't spin around, they will hit me and I will not be able to do any damage. Now, of course, in a proper battle, the dw a dwarf player would deal with this by just pulling the Thunder Barge back. So if Bretonia does try and get uh, nice and clever, uh, your, um, uh, your guns will just uh, shred them as they approach. And you will have, obviously, infantry on the ground doing their thing. Let's stop that. Let's speed this up a bit. What are you doing? <laughs> Bretonia, my man, what the hell? Okay, so, like, it's obviously not quite over, and I am killing their lord, so that's kind of screwing the test, but still. And they've decided to attack my guy, but yeah, it's, it's a bit touch and go. But basically, like, a fast flying unit that may not necessarily have the best armor can do a lot of damage to it. May not necessarily win, though in this case they could have won if not for, you know... AI sh shenanigans. By the way, this is the AI on the highest difficulty. No stats. Like, the normal stats, just the quote-unquote best AI. In theory. So, yeah, the AI is not really good at dealing with this um, in terms of tactics, but obviously a player would have just kept attacking, and they probably would have taken it down. Touch and go, though. But, yeah, not necessarily a huge difference in cost, but that's one of the solutions. Using... Um, things like Pegasus Knights or any kind of flying unit that's pretty fast can deal with it. Now, Pegasus, the Royal Pegasus Knights here, obviously an expensive unit. Um, though you got to give, you know, some some benefit to the AI when you're dealing with the battle like this because they're just not going to do a great job. Other options. Let me just go over though. Dealing with it as Skaven is going to be a bit interesting i am controlling the skaven in this particular battle because well the ai is just not good at using its abilities properly in this kind of situation but really the solution if you will is to just yeah use howling um use a howling warp gale uh and just hit it with all you got over there Although in this case, like, yeah, the AI is certainly not doing itself any favors, but still, like, you can absolutely sh uh, shred it, especially when it's just, like, not moving. Like, if you slow it down, this is the key about spells. You will need to use spells, but if you do slow it down, that will be enough to just blow it up. Simple as that. So... Masses of range units combined with spells that slow down will quickly take the thing down. Not really a problem. Of course, when you're fighting dwarves, you have to expect that they will have their own artillery, but it's a big target. You're going to be able to target it from a long distance away. A lot of your artillery is going to be fairly accurate against it because it is a big target. So ground-based, so mass, uh, mass artillery on the ground, if you slow it down and there's I think every, essentially every race, one way or another, especially the ones that don't have flying options, this is what they'd be able to do. Um, for the Wood Elves, you can use Hawk Riders. You can also use the Sisters of Twilight, because <laughs> Sisters of Twilight, I'm, I don't care how powerful a Thunder Barge is, Sisters of Twilight, because they're not a melee hero, would just shred it to pieces. Other options. Let's go over them. Now, green skin wise you can use goblin shamans and artillery on the ground to focus fire them you can also use feral wyverns uh, to try and catch up to this thing assuming the AI is not going to be completely stupid about it not really the best units to try and catch up to the thing uh, because they don't necessarily have the best speed but the, here's the thing about greenskins it is uh, you do have the ability as the greenskins to uh, slow it down significantly. And then between, you know, either a work war boss on a mount, Azak potentially, uh, and just feral wyverns, you may not kill it so quickly as the greenskins, but you can certainly keep it occupied in a situation where a dwarf player may have to devote a significant amount of attention just to keep it uh, alive. 
though yeah feral wyvern's not really the best choice but you do have spells that will help really damage it or keep it occupied or just like inflict such debuffs that it's gonna be tricky for the dwarf to keep it alive though yeah you will win more often than not against any like aerial duel but yeah wyverns can do quite well especially like put them on a work war boss or azak especially azak because he's got nasty spells that reduce its armor for instance and damage it so azak is maybe a hard counter to hard thunder barges and dwarves in general with with this so just an idea i didn't give the greenskins a spellcaster because they just can't control it. they just don't use the right spells for it but those are some options for something like the greenskins obviously here i know i know i got away with like half you know hp but if you know it's coming and dwarves are going to use it, then likely well, because if this thing uh, stays alive in the air against any aerial threat or artillery or anything like that, it's going to devastate like the ground forces. You can't uh, countering it from the ground without spells or master artillery is tricky. Countering it from the air is tricky. So it is obviously something that dwarves will use in multiplayer. Now I'm not really a multiplayer player, so I'm not making this video for that. But I'm just you know talking about like various things to consider when dealing with it and then finally the one matchup that i would consider a hard counter to the thunder barge chaos furies for beastmen you can use harpies they'll be less effective though but beastmen do have some nasty spells that will really hurt this uh, thing so five units of basic chaos furies not um upgraded versions no variant or anything like that will win like i'm not joking it's they're faster than uh, uh they're they're faster than the thunderbird so if we just move no! to um so if i move the stats over here you can see that they will literally outrun it regardless of what you do so using the afterburner i mean there's still a benefit in using the afterburner because you can reduce some of the melee attacks but literally five units that are roughly the same cost if not the exact same cost or pretty much the same cost, will win without using spells, without anything like that. And like you can see over here, like one of these guys are just like bailing out, basically. So that's the key. Surround it and swarm it with chaff air units because they will win. It's not an anti-air unit unless that air is a big single entity. So that's my video on the Thunder Barge being overpowered. Six units of Harpies, five units of Chaos Furies, use some spells, mass artillery, flying units with range attacks. Will work. Cavalry with anti largely flying, you know, Pe Pegasus Knights. There are options, many options, in terms of dealing with this thing. So that's all I got to say on this subject. Now, obviously, in the hands of a player against AI, it is going to be a very destructive unit, but that's just because AI can't handle a lot of shit. That doesn't mean the unit's a unit is overpowered. But, you know, I just wanted to showcase things. Um, whether or not the needs changes, that's a different discussion. Maybe an increased cost, slower speed on afterburn, or maybe more damage on afterburn. That's a legitimate discussion. I'm not trying to take away from that. Or give like a conclusion that oh this is fine as it is no i'm sure there are going to be some balancing changes that are going to be warranted it's worth saying in a campaign this thing is 700 upkeep by default so this might be a quarter of your freaking army uh in a dwarf campaign or something along those lines it may be worth half your army in terms of the damage potential but still it's really expensive and requires tier 5 you're probably not going to see them in a lot of dwarf com campaigns unless you're playing malachi and then you're only going to see free because he gets free uh, uh, free thunder barges uh, through his adventures. That's all I had to say. Costin signing out.